Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains. Today's topic is an exam question walkthrough for the algorithms course. As ever, if you are using previous exam questions to practice your skill in solving the kind of problems you will face in June, then you ought not to watch the video until you have tried the question in exam setting yourself. So give yourself 30 minutes, no books, no internet, no anything, and do as much as you can of the question. And then when you're satisfied with your answer, then watch the rest of the video. So stop the video now. You might use that time to stick a like on it. Um, and uh, I'll see you in a moment. All right, so if you're here, I assume you have done the question yourself satisfactorily, and let's see what I make out of it. So, imagine that the search procedure that looks for a key in a binary search tree is instrumented to print out the sequence of the keys of the nodes it visits. Okay. So, uh, for each of the following sequences, say whether or not it could have been printed by that procedure, justifying any negative answers. So the first thing uh, this prints is uh, 903. So I have visited the node 903. Okay. Then it prints 478. So I printed the node 478, which must have come from uh, going into the left side of node 903. Okay. Then uh, it prints 551, which must have come from going into the right side of node uh, 478 which I notice, um, happily, is still within the left side of node 903, because it's smaller than that. Then I get 598, 598, which must be the right-hand side of 551, but fortunately still the left-hand side of 903. Uh, then 560, which goes the other way, 560 goes this way, and it's in the left side of 598, but also still in the right side of uh, 551, because it's bigger than 551, it's bigger than 478, it's smaller than 903, I'm happy with all these things. Uh, 557, which is this way, uh, and it's still bigger than uh, 551, so I'm okay. And uh, 555, still bigger than 551, so I'm not violating. Uh, any of the prior things. Um, so this one looks like it's something that, uh, yes, could have been printed by uh, the visit of a binary search tree. What about the next one? 825. Then I go left into 302. Then I go right into 811. That's all fine. Then I go left into 340. That's okay. Then I go right into 812. No, well, that's not good because if I'm here in the left subtree of 811, I cannot have something bigger than 811. So that one makes it not possible. So no. The next one, uh, 788. I go into 359. Then into 875. 875. Uh, is supposed to be in the left subtree of 788, but it's bigger than 788, so I can't do that. It's the same situation as before. And so this one is also not allowed. So now next, uh, give a clear and simple description of a linear algorithm that, given an arbitrary sequence of integers, says whether or not it could have been printed by the search procedure referred to above. So basically this question is, uh, give me uh, a linear algorithm for doing the stuff you've done in the previous question. Uh, and so I can just explain what I what I did previously. The issue is whenever I do the check that we are still within, you know, the left subtree or whatever, uh, do I have to check all the previous things? Because if I do, then it's going to be a quadratic algorithm, not a linear algorithm. How can I do a linear check only? Well, I was kind of doing it mentally because I realized that, uh, you know, if if I'm satisfying this one, then I'm also implicitly satisfying this one. And if I'm, if I'm, if I'm satisfying this one, I'm satisfying this one and this one, because they're all um, in the same direction. Now, when, when I zigzag, what's happening when I zigzag? 
Well, I can view this procedure as basically uh, maintaining a, a, bound, a two boundary, a minimum and a maximum boundary that determine what range is allowed for the values I see next. So when I start, there's no constraints, and so uh, the minimum is minus infinity and the maximum is plus infinity. Then I get 903. It's within the bounds, so I accept 903. Uh, do I change the boundaries then, having received 903? Well, not yet. I have to decide based on where I go from there. So if I'm going left, as I do, then at that stage I <coughs> I understand nothing in the left subtree of 903 can exceed 903. So the new um, the new uh, max boundary becomes 903. The previous one says what it was because I haven't put any additional constraints there. So minus infinity, minus infinity 903. Then I receive 478, which is within those bounds, so I accept 478. Which way do I go from there? I go right. So in the right subtree of 478, nothing can be smaller than 478. So the new minimum boundary becomes 478, and the top boundary remains what it was. Uh, and then uh, I receive 5 by 1, it is within those bounds, so I accept it, and then uh, I check uh, I'm going right. So if I'm going right, then uh, anything in the right subtree of 5 by 1 must be at least uh, as big as 5 by 1, so this sets the new minimum here, 903. And so, uh, anyway, the next time I check if the next thing I receive is within these ones, it is, and then I check if I'm going left or right, and then I, accordingly, I set, um, I set the uh, maximum or minimum. So, um, so this is a um, linear procedure, because for every new uh, new value that I receive, I only have to check the value for being within the range that I've already established, and then uh, ch checking whether I'm going left or right to change one of the two boundaries. And I have no reason to um, to travel back up the rest of the things that I've already examined, because everything of interest has been condensed into the two uh, bounds, the min and max, that I maintain. So there we go. Uh, and since it says that the pseudocode is optional, uh, then so long as I have been uh, sufficiently clear, then I have earned my five marks by explaining this. Next, uh, compare the binary search tree and the binary mean heap. I better delete this stuff to have some space. Okay, I compare the binary search tree and the binary mean heap. Uh, yeah, well, that's not a question yet. Note for simplicity, ignore the payloads, assume that the keys are integers, and assume that there are no duplicate keys. Give a necessary and sufficient criterion to decide whether a given binary tree is a binary search tree. Excuse me. <coughs> so this is a straightforward definition. You, know, you get three marks for uh, repeating a definition. You wouldn't get these uh, basically three marks in an open book exam setting, of course. So um, this question is obviously set uh, for a closed book exam, and if you are uh, preparing, it is worth recreating those conditions and doing the question in closed book and see if you can recall the definitions properly. So um, definitions, you have to know the definitions, otherwise you can't, you can't derive uh, great thoughts if you don't know what the definitions of the technical terms are. So the case of the binary search tree, it is a binary tree where the keys of the nodes of the tree have the property that uh, anything uh, Anything in the left subtree has a key, if there's no duplicates, uh, has a key strictly less than the key of the root, and anything in the right subtree uh, has a key that is uh, sorry, strictly greater than the key of the root. So this is root key here, and uh, root key here, and this is the uh, left node key here, and this is the uh, R and root is, is not so not a good choice of left. Uh, let's call it x. Okay, the random node uh, in the left subtree called x is this, and the random node in the uh, right subtree called it y, um, its key is uh, always greater than that of the root. Is this being the root? Okay, and if you write it out properly, then you put for all and all that stuff. Um, but that's an easy three marks. Uh, and give a necessary and sufficient criterion to decide whether a given binary tree is a binary mean heap. 
Uh, that's another definition, basically. So another easy three marks. Uh, do you recall what uh, binary min heap was? Yes, I do. Uh, it has to be of a shape uh, of almost full binary tree, which means uh, all the levels of the tree are full, except possibly the last level. And if the last level is not full, then it must be full up to a certain point and then empty. So there can only be empty spaces at the rightmost end of the um, of the bottom level of this tree. This is the shape of almost full. And this is one condition, and there is another uh, necessary condition also, which is that uh, for every node in the tree, then uh, its key cannot be smaller than that of its parent, so that in the end the smallest key of the whole tree is always here in the root. And that's another easy three marks. Uh, is there anything more challenging? Well, uh, choose either the binary search tree or the binary min heap. Then give clear and concise pseudocode, so now we have to write pseudocode, to output the keys of that type of tree in sorted order in linear time. Justify why your answer gives the intended results. Well, which one would I choose between those two? Uh, it looks like the binary search tree is a better candidate because it has all these uh, less than uh, things which order all these things before this one, before that, that kind of maps naturally into a um, recursive procedure for printing things in order, which uh, would work something like this. So if I have a procedure for printing a tree called uh, PT for print a tree, a tree called T, then that would be um, the base of the recursion is that if the tree is empty then I've already printed everything there is to print, which is nothing. Uh, and so I can say if the tree is empty, print the empty string. I don't even have to do that because I might as well not do anything. So I'll say if the tree is not empty, then do this, otherwise just don't do anything in return. Uh, and if the tree is not empty, what do I do? I simply print tree recursively for the left subtree, print tree uh, t dot left, then I print the root itself, and then I print the tree, which, which must exist if the tree is not empty, uh, I print the, the tree uh, that is the right subtree. Uh, and that's basically uh, all I have to do. So how can I justify that my pseudocode gives the intended results? Well, um, this recursive approach uh, naturally matches a proof by induction, and the proof that uh, my code outputs the keys of the tree in sorted order. So uh, I would do induction on the number of keys in the tree. If the tree has zero keys, then uh, the code prints nothing, which is correct for having zero keys printed in order. Uh, if we assume by induction that the core, my, my code works fine for trees that contain up to, say, n keys, then uh, what happens for the tree with n plus 1 keys? If a tree has n plus 1 keys, then it will have a root, and then it will have two trees that between them make the other n keys. So each of these trees the left and right subtree will have between 0 and uh, n keys. And I had assumed by uh, inductive hypothesis that uh, my program, uh, when it's invoked on a tree that is uh, of n keys or less, it will do the right thing, it will print all the keys in order. So these, all the keys in, in here, in the left subtree, will be printed in order correctly. And they are all, by this uh, definition I came up with earlier, uh, well, this criterion for saying that it was a binary search tree, all these keys are strictly less than the key in here. So this thing is print, these keys are printed in order, fine. Uh, they're all smaller than this. Then I print this. Then I print all the keys in here, which are all greater than the key in here. Uh, and they're all printed fine because by inductive hypothesis, this doesn't have any more than n keys. And therefore, in total, all the keys of the tree are printed uh, in the correct order uh, for the tree of size n plus one nodes. So uh, that would be a formal proof, uh, a strong justification that my answer, my, my code here, 
gives the intended results and I pocketed my my three marks for this. So what's uh, left to do? For the other type of tree not chosen in part uh, B3, uh, so that would be for me obviously the, um, the min heap, uh, it is also possible to output the sorted keys. Is it also possible to output the sorted keys uh, in uh, linear time? Uh, well, I didn't think it was possible, that's why I chose the other one. Uh, but why exactly is it not possible? Um, well, yeah, obviously it's, <laughs> obviously it's not possible, because uh, if, if it were possible, it would give me a shortcut to doing something that I previously approved uh, in the lecture course was impossible, uh, namely um, doing a comparison sort in linear time. Because uh, if you give me an unsorted array, first I can turn it into a min heap, and I can do that in linear time, uh, because uh, I showed that in the course, and that was one of the uh, amazing and surprising properties of the heap, and watch that lecture again if you forgot, uh, it was like one of the coolest things about the heap. Then. Uh, after I got stuff into a heap in linear time, uh, if it were possible to do what is being claimed here, I put the sorted keys in linear time, uh, then I would be able to uh, put the keys in linear time, which in total would have sorted your unsorted array using a comparison sort uh, into linear time passes, so in overall in linear time. Uh, whereas earlier in the course, we proved a general result that this was not possible uh, because uh, every comparison sort would take at least n log n time, uh, essentially because there are too many possible permutations of the input to go through them in just uh, linear time, or in anything less than, than uh, uh, big omega of n log n comparisons. And so, uh, so, so that, that's a, um, a proof that it is impossible, no matter how you think about it, to uh, output the sorted skis in linear time of a min heap. And that's my last sub-question in the bag, uh, and I get my final three marks. So I find this, this exam question was, was not too bad, it was relatively easy. Uh, how did you find it? Did, did you get all the answers correctly yourself? Let me know in the comments. And say the magic word breadcrumb to let me know that you watched this far, which apparently most of my viewers tend not to do, unfortunately. So stick a like on this video if it gave you some value. Keep writing programs to implement what we discuss in the lectures because that's the best way to become strong in algorithms. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.